In our fiber optic cables, we have two types. We have a bifurcated probe for our D models and a trifurcated probe in our RC models. With the D models, there's one light circuit. Inside the electronics, light is injected into one leg of the fiber optic bundle. At the sensor tip, uh, the transmit and receive fibers are randomly mixed. Light escapes from the uh, probe, reflects off the target, comes back into the receive bundle. In the RC models, we have light injected into one leg and light is received in, in, in two detector areas. And the detector areas in the sensor tip are physically side by side, as you can see there. The typical operating uh, characteristic output of a D model sensor has this double valued function. There's a fast rise in what we call the near side of operation. The output reaches what we call the optical peak, uh, the maximum output level, and then it rolls down on the far side with a lot of operating range. Now, the way this uh, double uh, slope function is achieved is explained in this slide. When the probe is in contact with the target, all the light paths are cut off and, and no light can be reflected off the target. As the, as the gap uh, is opened up just a little bit, the transmit fibers uh, start uh, transmitting light and reflecting off the target and start illuminating the adjacent receive fibers. But each transmit fiber cannot illuminate all of the adjacent receiving fibers. As the gap increases to that distance that we refer to as the optical peak, uh, all of the transmit fibers are capable of, of illuminating all of the receiving fibers, and th this is where the device generates its maximum output. And as the gap increases beyond that distance, we, we're now into the far side where the inverse square law is essentially taking over and the, the light output is decaying with increasing distance. When we look at uh, a variety of target surfaces with our probes, and I'll show the uh, results for D models as well as the RC models. We have some interesting results. Here we have five target specimens, a gold mirror, a silver mirror, a mirror polished stainless steel block, uh, an anodized aluminum, which is a dull or diffuse reflector, and a black or brushed aluminum, which is also a dull uh, reflective target. If we look at the output of the D model sensors, you can see uh, when we scale the output so the gold mirror achieves full scale or 100% output, there's a very large variation in the output of the sensor, of the D model sensor, uh, and with the black target there's uh, nearly a 100% reduction in the uh, amplitude of the output. So there's a very strong sensitivity to the uh, reflectance of the target surfaces and hence we refer to these models as D models or reflectance dependent sensors. When we look at those same five targets with an RC sensor something very interesting develops. You'll see that uh, there's two curves uh, presented here. The top curve is is actually an overlay of the responses to the three mirrored targets, the gold and the silver mirrors and the uh, polished mirror polished stainless steel. The lower curve is an overlay of the sensor's response to the two uh, diffuse target materials, the anodized aluminum and the, and the brushed black aluminum. So uh, you can see by this chart that the, the reflectance compensated sensor uh, behaves totally differently than the than the D model sensor. Uh, it, it is clearly not sensitive to variations in uh, reflectance of the target materials, but yet there is a difference between the sensor response with mirror-like targets versus diffuse or specular targets. And that difference is about a 15 percent change in slope. Uh, to extend this just one further step, when we scan the sensor over uh, ground uh, specimens, nickel targets that have, have uh, a variation of uh, surface roughness from 2 micro inch up to 63 micro inch uh, roughnesses, you can see this, the spread of the data with the roughest uh, ground nickel surfaces, the sensor response approaches the response on the typical diffuse uh, anodized target and with the smoothest uh, ground surfaces, the sensor's response approaches the response of a specular surface or that of a front surface mirror. The RC sensors are, uh, are actually uh, uh, 
a combination of two D model sensors. If, if you look at the this side by side arrangement, the RC sensors are built with either rectangular bundles side by side or hemispherical shapes, which are also side by side. On one half uh, uh, of the sensors, let's refer to just say the, the white area on both of these, there would be a random mix of the transmit and receive fiber optics. And the output from just that one section would be what we've shown here, just the same as a D model sensor a fast rise to an optical peak and the gradual roll off. And we call that output function the, the random uh, detector function. The, uh, the adjacent bundle, which was say the red area in these pictures, generates uh, a curve which is shown in this red line here. And this is basically uh, similar to another D model, but its optical peak uh, falls at a much larger distance than the random mix bundle. So, and then now in the electronics, we, we ratiometrically process the output of the, the random and the adjacent bundles. And that ratiometric measure is, is shown here with this RC output function, which is very nice because it's a single-valued function, and it is insensitive to reflectance variations of the target surface. For example, if you just consider that this ratio adjacent over random, uh, if the sensor was scanned over a target that had a variation of its shininess, let's say it goes from gold to silver, well, the, the individual numerator and denominator would, would both increase or decrease proportionally with the change from the gold to silver, but the ratio would remain constant. And this ratio would only change if, when the distance to the target changes. So the important uh, uh, factor about in utilizing these devices is to uh, apply them to the smoothest surfaces that have uh, ideally specular reflection because uh, those surfaces will give you the best accuracy uh, and the best repeatability. Measurements can certainly be made to the diffuse and rough targets, but because the light rays are being scattered randomly, the repeatability of the measurement is going to be compromised. Now, uh, another point is that if you can apply these to a mirror target surface, you could take one snapshot, one single reading, and accurately know the distance to that target. In the case of the rough or diffuse targets, if you, if you can move the sensor around the target or have the target move past the sensor and average a lot of readings, you could also achieve a, a very high level of accuracy. When we uh, ship a sensor uh, to a customer from the factory, uh, we include a, a calibration chart. And this is a typical chart that we've shown here. Uh, <clears throat> on this chart, we, we, we fit a regression line, a linear regression line through the calibration data points. And we display the slope of that line, which becomes the sensitivity of the sensor. Here you see 14, approximately 14 millivolts per mil would be the sensitivity. Uh, we define the bounds of the linear range and we give you the y-intercept, so uh, the y-intercept plus the slope of the line gives the equation of that regression line. And we also define the noise level of the sensor. So now the, the resolution of the sensor can be derived by uh, multiplying the noise of the sensor by the sensitivity, and that would give you the uh, ultimate resolution in terms of mils or, or microns of the sensor within the bounds of this linear range, which is the area that has the maximum slope sensitivity.